hey hey so you want a deck this is what i built it took me about three or four days to do it and you can do it too i'm going to talk you through it and as always the whole point of these videos is to save you that money and give you the confidence to tackle that job yourself so let's get into it i have this area at the back of my garage it wasn't the best it was actually covered by an old trampoline and there were some old bins there and yet it was the sunniest bit of my garden got the sun for the longest period of time so i cleared it all and i decided that i was going to have a rectangular deck here i've made sure that it's nice and true and you can do that without any special tools or lasers obviously you've got lasers that's great so take a string line and go from each corner as so long as the distance you have from each corner is the same from here to here here to here then you know it's got to be pretty much true and if you look down the edge of this from a distance as well, using your string line there, you'll notice that if there's any bows in the wood. So once you've got this area then laid out, you know that that's where the holes are going to go for the posts and you can start digging away. Now to dig the holes, the best tool by far, if you haven't got a mechanical digger, and don't go using a simple shovel like this, you'll be there all day and you'll make a hole three times bigger than it actually needs to be. What you actually want is to use a nice, hole digger like this here. They don't cost much, they usually got fiberglass handles. You shove it in the hole, you twist, you pull the handles apart and you take out a little bit at a time. And within five minutes you've dug yourself a hole which is easily five or six hundred mil, that's just over half a meter deep, and it's ready for your post. Now I had to do 20 holes and okay it was a bit of a workout but I got through it and I got it done and it was far easier than actually and cheaper than hiring any mechanical diggers. So the holes are all dug and the frame is in place there. The outer post holes are ready to go. The actual frame itself is just sitting on bricks though. This isn't actually secured in place in any way. I just purely have it there bolted together to make sure that I know everything is sitting true. Now I've used clamps here against these posts and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. There's a far better way I found than putting the posts in first. I've had a lot of people put the posts in and then they offer up the framework to it. The problem in doing that is that inevitably you end up having twists and things where the wood is not sitting completely straight and then you're fighting against it. Also the post can move especially if you uh, when you've got the concrete that's setting um, and you haven't maybe put it quite in the upright position and when you start to then try and bolt it all together you can have difficulties. By far the easiest way that I've found was to get your outer frame, then get one of these clamps here, cut the post down to the right height, put it in the hole, clamp it to the joist, and then start filling up the hole with your post creep, basically your quick drying cement. You pour in the post creep into the, um, sorry, you put the water in first up to about a third, then you pour the post creep, and you can put in a few larger rocks or bricks and things. That will actually raise the level of the post creep in the hole and it will give you a really nice solid um, uh, secure post fixing. The top of the hole you can then fill in with soil so that you don't have water then sitting there after it's all set. Once the post is set you can run some coach screws through and the coach screws look something like this. Um, this type of coach screw works particularly well if you've got an impact wrench like this, I thoroughly recommend if you haven't got one, get it on your Christmas list. They are brilliant. Okay, the price is a bit dear, you can get them a bit cheaper, but if you put the 10 mil hex head on the end of it, you can pull these coach screws into the joist without even drilling them. And, it's, and they work in a way as such that sometimes when you screw two bits of wood together, at the last moment, the woods can actually separate. With this type of special, um, grated thread it binds and pulls the two bits of wood together and gets a really nice tight secure fixing okay so going back to the photos here um, what we want to do now is get all the posts in position and I'm checking to make sure that things are level along the way okay it looks a little bit of a mess but actually we're making good progress here the bricks underneath here these can be removed and I've put down some wooden planks to stop the grass from getting too basically trodden on as you're working. So check the levels as you go. The distances that I've done between 
a standard regulation as if you're building a home. So the posts are 100 meters, 100, um, uh, sorry, one, one meter or 100 centimeters or 1,000 millimeters apart in all directions. So a meter from here to here, a meter from here to here, there's another hole, and a meter from here to here. And the simplest way to do that is actually I used a just a wooden stick and just put it on the ground, mark where a meter is, that's where your next hole is going to go. Mark where the next meter is, that's where your next hole is going to go. And then there's one in that direction. Best to do it on a piece of paper, write it out so you can see. You may find that you can actually um, avoid having to do quite as many post holes by doubling up joists and things. But again, I'll come on to that in a little second. So it's starting to make shape now. Um, corner posts are in. These bricks can actually come away. And um, all of the posts, and there's 20 of them, have all been clamped, set, and taken the tops off with a, with a handsaw, basically. That's all it is. Um, so that um, we've now got everything nicely uh, nicely secured in place. And I can start to build up the rest of the joists in between. Now, the joists going across the way in the screen here at 400 mil centers, you'll probably find as you come to the end, you might have a slightly larger gap say instead of 400 mil you might be finding you're trying to span 700 mil and by having two joists in there it's actually going to be um you know too little a gap you'll end up having two or 300 mil between each joist it doesn't matter it just makes it a little bit more sturdy and, and more secure but do avoid having any gaps which are larger than 400 mil because you'll then start to get flex especially if you've got heavy things going on the decking in my case i had a jacuzzi so here's all the joists going in. If you find that you've um, not got enough and you don't want to keep wasting all these offcuts, which I've got here, you can join them together likewise as I've done there. Have yourself a good overlap. I recommend about 600 mil from the center of the join either way and use your coach screws again into them and it will secure it in place. And the nice thing about that is it actually makes slightly wider on the top, which uh, is all good for um, supporting the the decking above um, and uh, you end up then not having to waste so much offcuts. So off the wall here I've actually decided that I was going to screw directly into the wall so a couple of decent raw plugs. I have actually put some down pieces here just loosely um, tacked in place at first and then I, I bolted those to the wall so all the weight is actually supported on the wall and on these upright pieces here. This edge here is cantilevered off and the nearest post is about a meter back here. So all of this here is absolutely fine. It's going to be strong enough. The coat screws, by the way, go straight through the end and um, into the uh, into the joist that way. And what I've started doing here are noggins. I've doubled up, as I mentioned before, um, this joist here because the gap was just a bit too much to be 400 mil. So it's 400 mil from here to here, and then I've got this little gap here. But that worked to my advantage because you'll see in a few moments that the way I did the decking, I needed this extra little bit here to be able to give me a border to the decking that I was using. Tools I'm using, very simply, I've got a square, I've got a nice sharp handsaw. I've got a drill, which is good for drilling the holes um, where they're near to the end of the joist. And this is important because what it will do is avoid any splitting. When you get rid of this, here we go. You've got these holes here, which this hasn't been um, pre-drilled. You end up having this where the wood dries out and you get this horrible, nasty split. What you want to do is pre-drill them where they're close to the edge, then put your screws in and that will avoid uh, any unnecessary splitting. So um, other things I've got here is this little tin. This is a, a nice sort of um, yogurty thickness mix of PVA and water. And by using that on all the open top of the joist, it gives it a little bit more extra protection. Inevitably, there's going to be a bit of water that goes through the gaps on the, on the joist, and it just stops it rotting. But as you'll see later on, I also use a damp course on top here. I really recommend doing that. It, it really um, is cheap, it's easy to do, and I haven't seen anywhere on the videos online where they do it the method that I do it. So wait and see what I do. So here we go. All the cross joists are going across there. 
Um, this pier is a, is a join because the, the actual runs of the uh, joists weren't long enough. So I've joined it here, uh, just as I said, with about 600 mil overlap either side. And these are the noggins. The purpose of the noggins isn't necessarily for downforce. It's actually to stop the boards from twisting um, in all directions, and it stops the bounce as well. You can offset the noggins so that you can easily get the fixings in. Otherwise, it just makes it far too difficult for yourself. And there's a better shot there that you just offset them. Here, I've actually decided to go up to the fence, uh, to the, the posts which have been cemented into the ground. Um, gives it another little extra bit of support. And then the next joist I've gone to the side, and the next joist I've gone to the side, and then I've gone back in again. You haven't got to be too accurate on that. Um, I think they recommend about 12 to 1400 uh, gaps between. Um, and pretty much now we're ready to uh, put the decking on. But importantly, I'm going to show you how you should put decking on and how 90% of people lay decking the wrong way around. So the damp course here, this black here, you can buy it. It's quite expensive, a sticky, um, almost like a thick gaffer tape, which goes on the top. And the purpose of this is so that the water, if it comes through the joists, even though I'm using treated tanninized timber here, prevents the water rotting the top of the joists, um, especially where there's joins and things. And it is just basically a plastic barrier. Now you can get this stuff for literally a couple of pounds. It um, looks something like this. Here we go, 399 for 100 mil wide by 30 meters. And all I've done is taken that, and I've literally put a couple of screws, a couple of nails, and they are um, uh, clout nails, uh, galvanized roofing nails. Got one there, one there, one there, one there. You don't need many. The only reason I put those in is because it's a little windy this day. The decking, you're going to put screws all the way down. It's not going to go anywhere. And for the sake of a roll of 399 um, damp coarse material, it will give your decking years extra life. So I thoroughly recommend you doing that. I decided to put this um, little feature here, what do you call it, a gondola. Um, so I've actually bolted that. I put it into the ground. Not as deep as the post, it doesn't need it, it's not going to go anywhere. But I've actually bolted it centrally um, at the rear of my deck here. And um, I thought if I do that first, I can do the deck boards around it. It gives it a little feature and you get some nice sort of dappled light when it comes through the top. There's a good shot here. You can see the damp course, you can see the four posts just about. You can see where I bolted them through. And underneath, I've decided to put a weed barrier. You can do this if you want, not, not a light gets in there, and then just use a few rocks um, just to stop it from blowing around or, um, you know, uh, whilst you're working it can catch. So cheap bit of under underground or weed membrane, they call it, get that underneath the decking and that will stop anything from growing through. Starting today, the deck boards now, um, I decided to do a border and I've got a nice little mitre there. It's just a little attention to detail makes all the difference, shows that you've put a bit of thought into it. And that's it there. I ended up gluing this as well. It was a waterproof glue. So once it dries, um, make sure you wipe off any excess, otherwise it goes that funny white color. Um, but that, that then bonds really well. Wood glue is incredibly strong glue, after all it's just PVA. And if it's done right and it's and the weather's dry, um, it, it'll, it'll, stay, it'll stay bonded very happily. I, when I put these screws in and they're quite near the edge, I uh, pre-drilled those first as well. The rest of them you don't need to. Now you probably notice just by looking at this image that you think all these boards are smooth. Normally deck boards are actually the other way around. Well, deck boards have actually been engineered and designed to be laid in this manner. These are standard um, treated deck boards. And the grids, the, the ribs underneath, most people think are there for um, walking on to stop you slipping. I've had decky before and I've laid it that way and they are lethal in the wet because the water then collects, mildew and mould can then settle in the gaps, ice and that can freeze and you end up having, because you've got the grooves, less of a footprint as a surface area than you would do if it's flat. The end result being is actually more slippy. 
the whole point of these boards I'm going to show you is that you are laying them with the ribs on the underside and the reason for that is simply that the air needs to flow it's got to go underneath the boards if it doesn't go underneath the boards if you can imagine we're looking up on the underside the water is going to sit there and it's not going to be able to breathe it's just going to remain wet by having the boards the correct way around with the ribs on the bottom means that the crown which is the way that the wood actually is naturally cut you can see here that you know these got these naturally curves over time that there is going to end up um, making it bow slightly so if you lay the deck this way round, which is upside down this whole deck here will slightly curve up at the corners but if you lay it the other way around it will end up curving the other way and actually give you this setup here it will slightly give a, a little higher ridge in the middle to the outside therefore it will actually uh, repel the water and stop it sitting on the top of the wood so going back to this the decking should be laid with the ribs facing down to allow the airflow and the water will then run off into the small gaps another little thing about gaps between the decking is people will use uh, maybe a nail or a five mil piece of off cut wood to give you that um, gap my tip is if the wood is already if it's treated and it's and it's um, still got the the dampness in it from the treat treatment that wood is going to dry out and when it dries out naturally it's going to have a gap i've laid it before with a five mil gap and after the first summer when the wood's all dried out i've ended up having a gap twice as big far too large so the tip i would say is lay them tight together let the wood dry out and when you do you'll find that you have a nice little gap without you even trying so here you can see this wood is, is new it's what they call young it's fresh and they're all butted together but over time a gap will appear so now you can see the edge here I've got a nice little bit of detail there um, and where I've got to the edge I've made sure that I pre-drill all of those boards so that they don't split this is the PVA that I was talking about it's just a wet mixture of PVA and water and I've put those on the top of the fence post as a little bit of extra protection but I've also got the down course as well so we're nearly there a few more pieces to go and uh, you can see from this image as the sun's starting to come through this is why I wanted it here because it's the sunniest part of my garden there's my special little helper um, got my spirit level and uh, yeah he's making sure that it all looks good uh, he's gave me the approval thankfully And I've got a little uh, orbital sander there because there was a couple of marks that I just wanted to get rid of. Now it all looks very nice when it's freshly done. This is the edge here. You can see I've got the lines nice and straight. What I would recommend 100% is once you've done this and you spend all this effort and time, spend another 15 minutes sealing it. You will thank me for it because the wood over time will start to go grey. And if you treat it like I've done here, it ends up having the nice golden colour and it will last for such a long time. I'm a big fan of Runsil, this stuff here. It, it's natural. I didn't go for a stain. I didn't go for anything like that. No, it just goes on with a roller. That's it. It's dead easy to apply. You can apply it in 10 minutes, even with the size of decking that I had and you get great results it dries straight away and importantly when it rains it nicely beads off um, so the end result you can see there if I just go back one picture that's the deck seal on there it's a little bit of a sheen as well dries within about 15 minutes I've got the rest of these slats here on my little feature on my gondola I made a little step that's going to be improved slightly later on start to put the furniture back on New step put in there, bit of grass, hot tub of course, hammock, plants, pretty much job done there. And that's my end result. All in all, I reckon it probably took me around about three or four days. Um, 
once you get into it, it's really not that difficult. I think the, difficult, the most hardest thing about doing this was starting it, without a doubt. Pen and paper, Google it online, have a look how much you need, order it. Um, you may need to get a few more extra planks. But once you get going, it's really not that difficult. You just need to make sure that you work out the quantity of your length of your fence posts, the lengths that they come in, the number of screws, etc., etc. Um, but the end results speak for themselves. I've probably saved two thousand pounds in somebody doing this. Um, all in all, it cost me less than a thousand. So quite happy with that. By all means, leave all the questions you like. I'll put as much information in the description. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, very difficult, but the important thing is if I can help people, that's my goal. So if I can save you money and help you, um, that's what it's all about. So all done. Here we go. Here's the end results. I've got my hot tub. I've got my hammock there. And importantly, I'm getting the last few hours of the sun. I need to make sure I talk here. I don't want YouTube to give me a strike over this music. But uh, well worth it. And I hope this video gives you just that bit of confidence to tackle the job yourself. Please let me know anything you need in the details below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Cause it's time to move on